I love learning about humans in the sense of their unique aspects, the Maya in terms of their writing and their beautiful architecture and the iconography and how they survived in this jungle. By illustrating through human stories versus CO2 emissions, melting ice glaciers, polar bears becoming extinct, by telling the human side of the story, we can reach more people. The goal of a 2010 expedition was to look for archaeological remains underwater because the Maya considered openings in the earth, caves, water bodies, as portals to the underworld of Jibalba. And because the thousands of caves that have been found have offerings, ancient Maya offerings, we just knew that there'd be offerings at the bottom of the pool. So we came with, with the goal of trying to dive to look for these offerings. And that's the major goal of this project. In the series of the first few dives at Pool One, over a series of several days, Robbie Schmittner and Kim Davidson made some amazing discoveries. One of the first was their first dive when they were going on the west face of the cliff underwater. And they happened to look up and realized, oh, where's the sun? Where's the ambient light? And they realized they were in a cave. And because it was so gradual and sloping, they didn't realize. And then they looked, they, re they didn't go much further in but they realized, wow, this is a big cave, 31 meters below surface, down to the, to the bottom level, 60 meters, and they couldn't even see how wide it was. And, that, and, and based on what we understand, that is one of the largest cave systems, if not the largest underwater cave systems in Belize, and we've only just scratched the surface. I have never hung around with a group of divers before, exploration divers, and there is a difference between exploration divers and divers. Kim Davidson. We just had our first crocodile encounter. <laughs> My job on this expedition is to explore and dive, survey, and map the pools of Catablanca. Where are you? Tree hugger. <laughs> So let's see if we find some artifacts here. Robbie Schmittner, he is hilarious. He is so fun to be around. He keeps the dynamics going. My name's Bill Phillips. Bill Phillips. It is, it is, uh, it's been amazing to, to basically meet a living legend. <laughs> and um, I, uh, I'm looking forward to working more with him in the field now and in the future. I first met Dr. Patricia Beddoes two years ago in 2008. Hi, I'm Dr. Patricia Beddoes. I'm at Northwest University in the Department of Earth and Planetary Sciences. I focus on carbonate environments, uh, the hydrogeochemistry of carbonate environments, which are places, for example, where we have caves forming. On the west side of Pool 6, uh, our, our exploration team discovered this upwelling. It's an underwater spring upwelling, and it provides this magical experience because it's located in the bottom of a very large crater. So you're swimming along through a barren, fairly boring landscape underwater, and then the floor drops out from underneath you, and you come down, 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 down into this large crater, and the bottom is this boiling mass of sediment that's actually being roil, rolled and boiled. It's almost like a natural lava lamp. So we planned an, uh, a science dive to go in with the hydrolab, went in over the lip of the crater, descended down into the bottom, and I didn't want to have any interference with the water that was already in the pool. I wanted to get the best possible direct sample, the water coming out of the deepest fissure, out of the rock in the bottom. And so it required a little bit of digging, and frankly it was extremely low visibility down there. 
Um, but below the actual base of the sediment, there's about one and a half meters more space. And so with a little bit of effort, it was possible to get down, down, down into the very deepest part. And the data from the hydrolab actually shows indeed that the water coming out of the bottom uh, of this spring, coming into the pool, is chemically actually quite distinct from the water in the pool. Another amazing discovery by Robert Schmittner um, was the fossil bed, the several fossil beds at several different beds, I think 20 and 30 meters below surface, where they found megafauna, femur bones the size of a bowling ball, and, and, and possible tusks and pelvic bones the size of a large television set. It's just, and we left those in place. We only removed a few small fossils so we can actually determine are they fossilized or bone. And they're definitely fossilized, so we know they have to be of a certain age. But were they here, were, they, were these megafauna present during occupation by humans or about 20,000 years ago, 15,000 years ago, or are they much older? And what does it tell us about the geology of the area and how this escarpment was formed? 